So now we've got our decking going on on one of the platforms. We've started some of the decking on our ramp, but right now we're going to show how to do the skirt board. And of course, with any outdoor construction, there's always more than one technique, but this is a really simple one. Uh, it, 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 let me just show you so that I don't have to explain it. Basically with your structure, we have a two by eight ridge board, okay? And then down at the bottom where we have our, we're just gonna attach a, a two by four. Real quick. The idea being, we're creating the same depth of surface at the top and at the bottom for the skirt board to be attached on. Now because of the kind of structure, since it's a floating deck, our block is going to interrupt. There's only two options here when you're using a floating block. One is you attach your posts and your structure and then you build out four inches before you bring a skirt down. But what that does is it limits your structure, your 4x4 posts that are your handrails, to being surface mount rails only. Or you'd have your deck extending almost a half a foot past where your railings are, which gets to look a little bit dumb. So what I do is I would rather sacrifice a little bit of design and have the block showing so that I have safety. Uh, I want to have these 4x4s attached at the rim joist, at the bottom, and at the top rail so that they're going to be a, a, a safety element. I don't want anybody ever falling off my deck because the screw is ripped out of the wood. So you can see here I've got, you know, 30 odd feet of ramp and platform combination. Some of it's level, some of it's angled. So when we get to the angled section, um, we have an option. We can either cut the boards in advance or we can cut them afterward. So it works either way. I'm gonna show you both options. So right now, we'll start with just hanging a skirt board. Now I've marked back my spot here, 16 inches, and that is the measurement, believe that or not, of three of these boards side by side by side. So that'll come right to my outside corner. So all I gotta do is find my screws. All right. Now I'm using, this is just a, a, it's a fence board. It's very skinny, it's five eighths by five and a half. They call it a one by six. And basically it's just for creating privacy on a fence. I'm about an inch down and an inch in on my line. Drive that inch and a quarter screw. Nothing too fancy. Now you take your level. And here's the important part of doing skirt board. You would be surprised, but people can tell when they look at a skirt from a mile away if it's level or not. So we make it level. And then we're throwing a screw down here. Inch over and an inch up. Now I'm screwing at these two different points here trying to help eliminate the warping that's going to occur when this wood's drying out. Now, this wood is relatively wet. We want a little bit of air passing underneath our deck so we can install these boards nice and tight. Because in about 48 hours or so, once they've dried out, there'll be a nice little gap there for the air to pass through. So here's a little tip for you when you're doing skirt, you can't just put the level on the first board and then install 60 or 70 boards and expect it to stay straight. It comes out of the mill, every piece of wood has got different texture and grain, holds different amounts of moisture. So they warp and bend. You want to take a level every two or three boards and just confirm that you're on track. And if you need to make any adjustments, make it now like this. Just going to add myself a 32nd of an inch. Now, when this wood dries out and the gaps appear, that won't be visible at all. But if you keep on going, and let's say you get two or three boards that are a little bit wider at the top, or they've got a bit of a, a bend and a warp, you'll end up getting a skirt that'll fan out on you. And then when people are coming up to look at your deck, they're going to visually, they're going to notice this. And the reason they notice it if you look down here, you can take the edge of this post and look down at the edge of that post and you just pass your eye along it. 
and they should touch top and bottom at the same time. If they don't, one of them is not level. So when you're walking into an area like this with all these square posts and beams, if something's not level, it sticks out like a sore thumb because the lines are passing at an odd rate and it's really noticeable and nobody wants to be, you know, nobody wants to make junk. All right, so this is a little bit of fun for those at home who are comfortable using a skill saw. Or, yeah, we'll call it a skill saw. I'm old school. Um, basically what you need to do is you gotta set the depth of your blade so you're gonna be comfortable to cut this and not overcut it. Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna visually keep an eye on my blade and make sure it's on the top of my rim joist. And I'm just gonna run this along and these boards are gonna topple over out of the way. And if all goes well, so that was kind of fun. That's the first time we ever filmed something and we weren't rolling. So we just demonstrated how to cut down the skirt board with the skill saw, so we're gonna do it again. <laughs> Added another board. So basically, you gotta get the guard out of the way. So if you're not comfortable using this kind of tool, then don't do this. And now, we just rest that blade on the rim joist, start her up, and off you go. All right, so fantastic. Now we're here finishing off our handrails. We have two systems on this deck. One of them is just wood, spindles. It's uh, just a matter of satisfying the code for the ramp area. And we want to minimize the amount of space it takes up and not too many design dramatic features. But uh, the system here is really simple. We framed a platform and a platform with a ramp in between. So our posts are right at the point of contact. We're going to just mark our wood here off the post Translate that slope. I think the angle is about five or six degrees. I can't remember off the top of my head But this way I can pass this over to Nate. He's gonna cut it for me And I'm gonna have a top and bottom rail I've already cut the heights, so that's good to go. And then I've got a top cap as well All right, so these handrails require a banister one of these little spindle things Our code in our region we can't have a gap more than three inches so we have to use, you know, a few hundred of these bloody things. The most time consuming part of this job is taking all those staples out. Ugh, why they put a sticker on every single piece of wood, I don't know. Then they bundle them together. <laughs> that's another video. I like to just use a spacer. That's really handy for when I'm doing something like this. That's my ba balusters that I'm using. Done. All right. Again, we want to burn that screw before we drive it so it doesn't split. Reverse. Once you see smoke, you know you're good to go. We're going to throw a screw right on the tip. This is for all the do-it-yourselfers at home. This is just a mounting screw. That's your extra pair of hands as I call it. And you can put one of those on each end, right on the tip. And then when you're done with that, you can then place your board in position. So I've got my trusty assistant, Nate, here today. But if Nate wasn't available, how in the world would you do something like this all by yourself? Well, like that. Now I don't need my assistant there anymore. Wow, that's loud. Now this one's sitting a little bit high. So I've started that screw. I'm backing this one out of the way. When I drive the screw down, the angle of that, it'll, it'll pull the 2x4 down the 4x4 post. So you can get in nice and close and watch this. I'll just... Perfect. So now we're gonna install our top cap. Uh, very important, especially in outdoor construction. This L shape is really structurally significant. When you have your wood trying to warp in two different directions at the same time, 
The fact that the grain is going in two different directions, we're tightening them together. It creates enough resistance that neither of them will move. If you don't have a top cap, when you put your baluster on, you're sitting here leveling and you're trying to make it all perfect. With a top cap, it's where I want it to be. Before we go crazy here, what I want to do is I want to mark my 59 and a quarter. That's my center mark. Because I measured this out already. And if I start at one end with the space, and then I come across, I end up with an odd space. The space on each end is different. And it's just a little space. So what I'm going to do is start in the middle and go left and right. And then the space on each end of this railing will be exactly the same. <laughs> We want to go just past the surface of the wood there, knowing that we have a three inches of wood and that screw, if I keep going, will end up in my finger. We don't want that. So for simplicity's sake, we have balusters are one and a half by one and a half inch actual dimension. So we can't go more than three inches. And if we put two of them together, it is three inches, probably a little bit less. So when you're doing your balusters, keep it simple. Put two, put the third one up, and that's your spacing. All you gotta do is just drive your screw, put it on, nice and tight, maintain your level, and just like when you're doing your skirt boards, throw a lot on every two or three boards just to double check, make sure things aren't going crazy, and then there's your spacing. We double checked our paperwork from our city. They gave us design specifications for what's an acceptable installation. And where we are, they want two screws in the bottom rail, one on the top. Don't ask me why, but that's what we're going to give them. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube.